Uh, as you can see, um, after a few weeks of not being able to use my printer, I've managed to find a location and I'm printing off a load of uh, board game components. And this job, if it will focus, uh, yeah, almost 80% complete and uh, it's been running overnight quite happily. It's all looking pretty good right now, so very pleased. Well, hello. Uh, well, shortly after filming my opening sequence, saying how smoothly everything was going, uh, these game board components I was printing out went wrong. Um, obviously, where I've moved my printer to the new location, uh, I thought I had it all set up perfectly, but apparently not. Um, can I, yes, here you go. Here's the offending piece. Uh, this piece uh, decided to break free from its um, bed and might just about be able to catch it on the edge here this little nicked edge it kind of wobbled up caught the print head and started getting dragged around so I had to cancel the print job luckily it was close enough to finish in that I could probably do it now part of the problem is I was printing all of that lot over there on mass uh, rather than individually and I think maybe that the kind of bed wobble um, maybe made it break free so that's the first big issue I've had in quite a while uh, I did have a similar issue with bed adhesion on this particular print which should be a nice complete skull but again I can convert that so bed adhesion seems to be the big issue for me right now that I need to work on now I did mention I was printing out board game components as you can see uh, if I remember correctly all of this is tilescape I can't remember who this is I've got a feeling it's either tilescape or fat dragon this lot in the middle here is Fat Dragon, then all this lot on the far right is Thingiverse. I've got a trap door, I've got a load of shelves and things, I've got a Fat Dragon tile which dry brushes and kind of stains quite nicely. Or my preferred tiles, which are these tilescapes which take a wet blend really well with a little bit of mild dry brushing as well and then a little bit of staining. So that smoother tile finish looks more like a Hearst Arts Moulds and therefore works for me better than this. Um, I've got another tile to paint up. I've just quickly given it a quick minimal coat of black. I'm probably then going to base coat it with brown and as you can see it's got this nice little locking system on the bottom so you can click it onto a platform so you can click the tiles together and they won't be moving anywhere. When it comes to uh, some decorations for your dungeon, got this lovely crepe model which yeah, the light here is not showing up the detail, but there's some really nice detail on that. And I resized it down to a slightly smaller cube. Slightly oversized chest, in my opinion, which I shrunk down to a much more reasonable size chest. And those two together make a quite nice uh, little job. Some nice detail on this coffin. Um, that's going to be good for some crypty type locations and then this really really nice barrel I have to say I'm very impressed with this barrel so, so to give you a sense of scale on this uh, here is a Lord of the Rings dwarf so you have a look at that you know not not bad scale wise uh, I've got a Perry miniature samurai a gripping beast Viking Berserker and then good old school GW Ogre. So let's put them all in over there. So as you can see, quite nice little mix. Now let me just open this rattly box here to show you how stuff compares, to, for example, to Hearst Arts Mold. So we've got the giant wine barrel, we have the slightly smaller open barrel, a packing crate a small delicate chest, slightly bigger wooden chest and a crate. So let's have a closer look at that lot. So as you can see, size wise, this big barrel here, which is I'm pretty sure is Fat Dragon, not quite so delicate as the Hearst Arts moulds, but pretty good combo. Obviously I could blow it up bigger so it's more of a match for this bad boy. Uh, this particular crate here is quite interesting, let's move this stuff out of the way. And oh where's my little crate gone? There it is. So really nice mix of these four to get a nice room full of 
material and you know, nice combo of sizes. So really, really keen on that lot. And as you can see, size-wise, I think Hearst Arts Moulds nailed it pretty good. The 3D print stuff seems a little bit bigger, but it's probably designed more for the heroic scale GW type stuff, because as you can see, it doesn't look too out of place compared to this big old BC I've owned for a very long time. Um, yeah, so pretty happy with uh, the overall collection I'm slowly building up. Now, I do have Hearst Arts Moulds, I've also got a 3D printer, so I've got the best of both worlds. There's a really nice look and feel to the Hearst Art Moulds, but the plastic, you can take one file and print off multiple sizes, whereas obviously Hearst Arts, he's had to mould two different pieces. So you get a more uniform look maybe with 3D, but of course if you've got some 3D skills you can customise it. Hearst Art Moulds, you get a more organic feel. Uh, mixing these barrels, I think it works pretty well, they're going to work pretty well together. Um, the chests, as I say, I'm, the chests at the moment, Hurst just knocks the 3D prints out the park as far as I'm concerned. Um, but Hurst Arts, obviously the problem you've got with this is you've got to get some plaster of some description, you've got to mix it up, you've got to get that to the right thickness, you've got to prepare your mould, you've got to pour your mould, you've got to agitate your mould, you've got to scrape your mould, so it's a lot more faff doing this than just downloading a file, putting it on an SD card and saying print. But the results are pretty good. So I, I would recommend, even if you've got a 3D printer, you might want to pick up some Hearst Arts moulds um, just for some variety, if nothing else. And, and the kit that comes with the chests and the crates and the barrels is well worth getting, in my opinion. You also get some tiles that are similar in look to this, which might be worth picking up as well. Um, so really, really pleased with the mix and the potential I've got now for great board games. But in the meantime, i got to get back to these bad boys and probably a little bit of green stuff on the top. I do have a sheet of PLA that was printed off um, for a job that I decided to cancel. I might be able to cut it off and use it as a, a nice top or base for these pieces. Uh, I need to have a think about what I'm going to do there. In fact, I am tempted to go into a 3D package, open these up and give them a nice flat plinth like you've got on here to give them a bit more stability. And that might help also with, as I say, where they're quite thin and I put a lot of them on the bed, I think they started rocking like this and, and that's why I had problems with my printout. Um, but yeah, um, overall pretty happy, still learning. Uh, I've had a few comments on my other YouTube videos about configuration problems are why I'm having problems like this and I am well aware of that so thanks for the feedback but I am aware it is a learning experience and as I say I've had this 3D printer less than two months and I've only really printed actively on it for about a week because with Christmas coming up I had to clear the printer off because this table is the dining room table and that's where I actually was doing my 3D printing but I've actually rotated it round and put it on my my gaming case here so there it is, off in the corner, along with all the alcohol, yes, um, which we may have drunk some of. And as you can see, I'm currently printing, I believe it's a tilescape barrel, so if you zoom in, you might maybe see something tiny over there underneath that print head. So anyway, more news as and when it happens. <laughs>